Today we're going to be talking about uh, a very, very awesome little uh, file mo format that has little by little made its way into the CG industry and now uh, it's been used in a lot of places. I know that the place where I work we use it all the time. Uh, the name of this uh, file format is called JSON and if you have never heard about it, don't worry, we're going to go through it. We're going to start very slow and we're going to keep ramping up until we actually are going to get to do some uh, practical exercises exercises on how to use this. Uh, that will probably be in another video. Right now we're just going to cover the basics. So uh, let's get started. JSON. So what is JSON? Uh, JSON is a data inner exchange uh, format and it is based on JavaScript objects. Uh, the name JSON actually comes from uh, the acronym JavaScript Object Notation. So why use JSON? You know, when you could be using something like XML or try to roll out your own inter-exchange format. Well, uh, there are several reasons. One of them is it's very easy to read and write. It's uh, also very fast and compact. And it's ideal for uh, transferring data that can be stored as ordered lists or key value pairs, pairs. So, for example, anything that's an array or a dictionary or a hash table is something that uh, that will integrate really well with JSON. Um, and also, one of, another reason is that it maps pretty much with most computer uh, programming languages out there. Uh, Python has support for it, PHP, C Sharp, Perl, I mean just JavaScript, the, the number of programs uh, of computer programming languages that support JSON is quite big. So uh, that means you now have this one inter-exchange format where you can just uh, drop everything into it. Like for instance, uh, let's say you're trying to export something from Maya, you can put everything into a JSON file and then uh, very easily, you should be able to recover all that information in Houdini, in uh, Blender, and pretty much any 3D application that uses uh, Python as a scripting language or any other scripting language that supports uh, JSON parsing. So, what are the supported objects in JSON? As we said a little bit earlier, it supports basically order arrays and objects that have uh, key value pairs. So these are the two uh, main objects. Uh, right here, this diagram, the top one, basically will tell you that uh, an array begins with a, a square bracket. Then inside of it, it can have an X number of loops of a value and then followed by a comma if you have more than one value. Uh, the last value in the set does not in a comma at the end, of course. Uh, and then it will end by being closed by another square bracket. Uh, on the other hand, the other object that uh, the other object that is supported by JSON, it's called the object. Uh, this, as I said, uh, maps really well to dictionaries or hash tables, and you can see why right here. Uh, it starts with a curly brace, and then you're going to have uh, a string that is going to be the key to what you're trying to store. Uh, then there's a colon in the middle, and then at the end you have the value. If you have more than one of these in your object, then you have this uh, constant loop where you can have a comma separating X number of, uh, of strings and values. And at the end of every object, of course, you're going to close it down with another uh, curly brace. Now, what can value be? And this is where things get interesting. A value can be a string, a number, another object, another array, uh, the values true, false, or a null value. So by just looking at this little diagram, you can tell that uh, you can have a, 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 an object that contains an array, and that array can contain objects, and that object can contain arrays and strings. I mean, it's just, you can build this uh, structure that can hold so much data in a very fast and compact way. So what does JSON look like? We have a little bit of a, of a JSON snippet right here. Uh, this here is an object. As you can see, it starts up with uh, curly braces here on top. And then we go to the first key element. It's called menu. And there's a colon. And then the next value, instead of being just a string or something, it's another object. So what does this object have? Um, it has the key value uh, ID with a value file, uh, the key value with another value file. And you just have several elements like this. And as you can see, it keeps going down all the way to menu item. And menu item, the value for it is an array. But hey, 
as you can see here, it's an array of objects. So uh, you can really quickly see how uh, you can store things that have uh, relations with a key value, or if you don't need a key value, you can just store arrays. Uh, if you are like used to Python, you will see that this very well matches to a Python dictionary. And that's where the power comes in, in, in uh, for example, a web programming language like PHP, this would match pretty much with an array, which most arrays in PHP support key value pairs. So what can I use this for? Um, I like to use it for exporting or importing uh, data where I don't need live reading. Like for example, if you're trying to export something like a, like cache animation to move animation data, point animation data from one application to another, this might not be the best solution, you know, because it will probably have to parse the whole thing on every frame as you move forward. Uh, there's other file formats that are more uh, a better solution for that kind of task. But if you're doing an import export task where you can like for example, uh, and this is an example we're going to do later, uh, if you're trying to export uh, a camera from one application to another, uh, you can use JSON as a intermediate file format where you go to Maya, uh, you loop through all the frames of the animation and every frame you capture the values and you store that in a JSON file. And then you can take uh, that same file and load it into Houdini or Blender or Softimage, uh, any other application that you want. And what you would do in that application is you just run from frame one to the last frame and you set a keyframe. So that's where uh, you lose the live reading. Basically, you read the file one, you set the keyframes, and then you move on. Um, what you can also use it to configure menus or tools. This is something that, for example, where I work, we use it a lot to configure the menus of Maya or tools that we're going to deploy out to production. Uh, there's a single JSON file that holds uh, all the tools, where they live, uh, help documentation for them, and a whole bunch of different things that can uh, help our one system that deploys all this information into the floor. Uh, all it has to do is read that one file, and then you know it knows everything that it needs to move forward. Uh, you can also use it to define production assets, uh, to store settings for scripts, uh, to create uh, attribute mapping files. Uh, I recently used it uh, very successfully to be able to... Uh, uh, I have this one JSON file where basically I was able to map uh, attributes from RenderMan into Maya so that when I create a new attribute in Maya, it would know whether it needed to be like a like a chip checkbox or a, or a Dropbox or something that uh, it's a lot more user friendly. Behind the scenes there's a JSON file that converts that into a RenderMan attribute and it's uh, it was pretty easy to implement because of JSON. Uh, and you can also use it to store just pretty much any key value data or ordered array. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, play a little bit with JSON. But before we do this uh, I want to show you a couple of places. Uh, this first one right here is called json.org and as you can see the images that I was using uh, this is where they came from. Um, I only took these first three ones because those are I think the most important ones but if you scroll down you're going to be able to see the definition of what actually makes a string like this guy right here here's the definition of how a string could be defined. Uh, a number, a number could be defined like this and then down here at the bottom you're going to have all the different languages and like I said there's a lot of them that support uh, JSON for parsing and writing and importing really fast so this is a good website to go and, and learn more about JSON um, and also the other web page that I have open is the uh, Python JSON encoder and decoder so I just have this app for reference because I don't know all the functions off the top of my head but uh, as you try to use it, this is a, a good page to go read and, and usually all I did was Google uh, Python space JSON and this is pretty much the first page that's going to come up. So let's go over to our terminal and I'm going to start my Python interpreter and first thing I'm going to do is import JSON. There you go, so now we have uh, the JSON module imported and um, I'm going to go ahead and define an object. So I'm going to define an object with the name Q and I'm going to tell it that this is, uh, let's start with an array. So this is an array. So now we can do uh, Q append. And then what's going to be the first object that we're going to put here? Let's put uh, the, let's put an object. So here we're going to start an object and put a key name. 
and then Rudy, comma. So that's another element of our dictionary. Uh, last name, Cortez. We close that up. And I forgot this colon right here. So now Q has those values in there. Um, if we do that again, we can do Q append. And let's do uh, Smith. And here we can do John. All right, and if we print Q again, we have uh, this whole element. So as you can see right now, this pretty much matches one to one to JSON, uh, which is why you can go ahead and do something like uh, print um, JSON dot dump s, which is dump string, and then you can do Q. And I like to do this indent equals four spaces so that I can see it a little better. And when I hit enter, you can see right now here, it, it built a, a JSON string. Now, JSON's very finicky, like if it's not properly structured, it's gonna fail. It's gonna fail completely. So what we can do always is take this value right here, we can copy it, and there's another website that is actually pretty useful that is called JSON Lint, which is a JSON validator. So you can just drop your stuff in here and validate, and then it's going to tell you if it's valid or not. If you're missing a comma, like this guy right here, and you tell it validate, it's going to break because it doesn't. It, it knows that it needs this comma right here. Uh, I think also sometimes it's very uh, tricky. Like if you take out um, uh, this quote right here, sometimes it will pass, sometimes it won't. Uh, it doesn't like it in this uh, particular case. Uh, there's some languages that are a little bit more free, but I think the actual JSON implementation like the actual definition of it says that every key must be a string so if we do that and we validate again now you know that you have a valid JSON um, this kind of validation is more useful with this website if you're trying to write JSON by hand if you're trying to write it through a programming language like Python uh, it will be pretty hard basically because if you try to uh, like let's say you try to append something to this and, and, and you don't script it, you know, you don't format it properly, you have a syntax error, it's going to fail. So by just building a programming object, then you know that you're actually building good JSON. So um, now you can use this JSON, you can write it to a simple file. So we can do something like, um, let's see here, we're going to do file, op we're going to do um, a file out equals open and then we're gonna do on this current location we're gonna do test to JSON and then we're gonna tell it that we want to write to it then we're gonna do file out dot uh, I'm sorry actually what we need to do is JSON dumb and then you give it the object which is Q the file handle which is file out and then you can give it if you want also that indentation so indent equals four to prettify it. Then you just do uh, file out dot close. Oops, forgot this. And if I open another tab and I go to the location of that, let's go into this location. And uh, here, uh, if we keep going into it, Actually, no, I didn't save it there. So let's just do this. And we have a test JSON down here. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a cat of test.json. And there you go. Now we have this JSON file. So now you can take this into another uh, Python session if you want. Uh, let me go back to the previous one. And uh, I'm going to read that file back. So I'm going to do file in equals open test.json uh, read we need that R there right then we're going to store this into an object so we're going to do JSON obj equals JSON and then um, I don't remember what the command is to read JSON so I'm just going to do uh, load s or load so let's go over here in JSON load. We give it our file handle, which is file in, and just hit enter. 
uh, now I can close the file handle and if I print out uh, the value of uh, JSON you see we have right here pretty much the same data that we had on our queue. Uh, this little use uh, in front of every text it lets you know that uh, every text field here is actually an Unicode uh, field but the values are pretty much exactly the same. So there you have it. it is a very brief introduction to JSON. Um, it's very easy to use as you guys saw it's just straightforward to write things out so we're going to do another video very soon and we're in which we're actually going to go through the process of exporting uh, a camera and store that in a json file so for now that's all we have and thank you for listening